Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to start in a, another session of today's Public Climate School organized by the students uh, for the future um, this week. A very interesting and very promising and very important initiative by the students of the university I really like. Uh, me, myself, is also a part of the Scientists for Future hosted as at Berlin and a part of this uh, presentation here is based on a paper that was written by members of the Scientists for the Future. I will show this later on. So I am a professor here at the University of Freiburg and I am the holder of the Götz Werner Chair of Economic Policy and, uh, uh, and Constitutional Theory. Um, I'm dealing a lot with basic income and also as the head of the new FREBIS, Freiburg Institute for Basic Income Studies, which is also hosted at the university. Um, we study, at least a few of us, um, the question of uh, the climate as a refund of the carbon tax. So in that way studying also climate justice and new order liberalism. Yeah? I'm coming from order liberalism. I will show the concept in short. And um, I'm interested, since I am a student, in justice more than, as usually the case in economics, in efficiency. Yeah? <laughs> so therefore, I'm very glad that I can present something here about climate justice. And my approach here in the new order liberalism is the approach of social sustainability, which is a little bit different but related to ecological sustainability. And I would like to show that only with a climate basic income, climate justice as well as social stable sustainability may work if we want to uh, mitigate the damage of the climate. So therefore today I will present first the climate justice issue by the climate basic income which may be financed by a carbon tax. Then I will give a short introduction to new order liberalism and the specific aspect of social sustainability. And uh, then I will test is that if I have enough time uh, th this new order liberalism, social sustainability with the Paris Accord, many of you will know. Yeah which is also organized um, as a contract on uh, uh, stopping climate change and especially to protect um, uh, the climate. So the publication I mentioned, which is uh, organized with a lot of um, um, uh, members of Scientists for Future is this one here by Wolfgang Gründinger and many other um, Scientists for Future, for example, Gregor Hagedorn, uh, started Scientists for Future in Berlin. Um, you see it's a German one, but I can explain it in English. It's simply on carbon pricing and social inequality in Germany. The next paper on which I would like to refer more um, um, indirectly is Lessons from Globalization in the COVID-19 Pandemic for Economic, Environmental and Social Policy, which I wrote together with Bianca Blum. And my concept of new order liberalism and social sustainability and its application for basic income is inside these two publications. This is another publication on basic income issues. This here on basic income in times of crisis, I would say climate crisis is important and more long-standing crisis than the COVID crisis and the Ukraine crisis which seem uh, at the moment to overshadow the climate crisis, which is from my point of view simply not just, <laughs> yeah, because we have to be active in the climate crisis now. And a very new paper which is published here and on which I will have also some arguments, not on the paper but on that what uh, it contains, is acceptance of CO2 pricing, especially in Germany. And I will argue from my point of view the acceptance of the carbon tax is uh, uh, supported by that what I call the climate basic income, which is sometimes called a climate bonus or climate premium, and which helps a lot in the acceptance in the citizen life. 
Okay, now climate justice uh, via uh, carbon taxation. Um, the idea is that um, we introduce, it's clear, you tax with a price which, which is moment we have usually discussions of 35 euro or 50 euro in Germany, yes, or in Europe, uh, if that is enough, is another question, yes, into political discussion. The idea is that this taxes, which always gives a burden yeah, to the citizens, but which might give incentives to the citizens so that it may heal yeah, or mitigate the climate damage, yes, this should be organized in a socially ba balanced way by a lump sum, by a head transfer, the climate bonus, which I will then the climate basic income. In 2019, so therefore you see the importance as a thinking on that point, two Nobel laureates, former members of the US Council of Economic Advisors, some chairs of the US Federal Reserve chairman proposed carbon tax and the reimbursement of the revenues per head. This means a climate tax transfer system, yeah? and not one where you invest uh, the revenue of the carbon tax into direct yeah, climate mitigating purposes, yeah? like um, uh, solar energy or so where you refund it as a social transfer to citizens. This sounds sometimes for activists because they say we have to uh, employ the double dividend and to uh, pay uh, and to use the money for uh, environmental activities. Yeah? But there is a good argument you will see behind uh, the climate uh, basic income. And the argument here is fairness and redistribution. To maximize the fairness and political vi viability, this means political acceptance, reform of the, um, of the um, status quo system of a rising carbon tax, all the revenues should be returned directly to the US citizens, these were US researchers, through equal lump sum rebates. The majority of American families, including the most vulnerable, this means uh, for the bottom up, it may pay people uh, and, and income, low income earners, it may pay. It will benefit financially by receiving more in carbon dividends, that's the idea of a dividend, yes, than they pay in increased energy prices. So the idea is that more or less the rich ones yeah, uh, contribute to the damage yeah, of, uh, of the climate, so therefore they have to pay a relatively high carbon tax in consumption as well as in production, and if we reimburse it per head, then on the net yeah, um, benefit, um, the uh, poorer ones and the poor ones will earn a net reimbursement payment, yes? They pay only a low carbon tax and they receive a high climate basic income, and we pay it to everyone uh, because uh, you will see there are some reasons for cross cr cr payments, yes, and which might be new um, and which are um, oriented to the thing that you can calculate. You may know this from the European Union, yes, what you put into the system uh, of money and what you receive of money out of the system and then you can calculate if you are a net beneficiary yeah this is the receiver that your net balance at least in payment positive then you see on net you do not uh, damage climate yeah <laughs> or if you are a net polluter if you pay more carbon tax than you receive back. Yeah? And therefore the rich ones have the same signal and that's the idea behind the system to have transparency for the individuals, what they receive at over the year. So we have different per head reimbursement proposals, not er uh, uh, everyone's are equal. For example, Ms. Bloom and myself have directly the climate basic income idea, that's a cross payment, you will see it in a moment. Then there exist a climate premiums which are very 
nearby, a climate bonus system, yeah, an energy transition bonus. Here you see the argument. It should be used uh, for energy transition in the future, which is now perhaps of more importance than the Ukraine crisis. My thoughts were made only with respect to climate issues, not with Ukraine crisis issues, with energy crisis issues. But now it may also foster an uh, energy transition bonus if you calculate it for energy payments. Yeah? You see here there is some earmarking, whereas this one is a, per, a, a poor per head payment. Then sometimes it's called also eco bonus and sometimes it's called the climate dividend. There are some different some um, different ideas behind it, but the per head payment more or less is always the same idea. Yeah? Sometimes in, in kind it means you have to invest a, a per head payment for uh, a restructuring of your energy system at home, yeah? a new energy system and so on, or for eco things only. So you receive a cash payment, but this cash payment is bound to certain expenditures. Or with the climate basic income you receive it, it's completely unconditional yeah? and it's universalistic. You can employ it for what you want. So you see behind some we have the double dividend idea of these per head payments and behind some uh, there are justice arguments uh, which are different from the double dividend idea. So some of the differences in the reimbursement scheme are here as I said that uh, we try to have an unconditional and universal cash transfer. This means you pay your taxes, yeah? Uh, dependent on your carbon consumption yeah, in the goods, in the goods consumption or in your production and you receive a payment. Yeah. So no net reimbursement across reimbursement and then you have the carbon tax amount you have paid over the year if you have calculated it minus the climate basic income you received as a cash transfer without any obligations at the end or the beginning of the year. Yeah? And then you can calculate the net payment if it's positive or negative. Then there exists also integrated net tax transfer schemes. For example, the tax credit here of Bach Kempfer. And the idea here is that you can uh, uh, have a credit directly to your tax payments. Yes? If it is inside the withholding system, yeah? that uh, the carbon tax you pay is offset directly to your tax amount, then you have only a net tax amount at the end of the year. Yeah? This means you do not know how much you have received yeah? and how your net uh, uh, tax payment on income changed due to the carbon tax or the climate uh, 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 reimbursement per head. Yeah? which uh, is a tax relief. Yeah? You know, it's a net system, not a cross system, a net system. Another net system is here the idea that you can deduct um, the uh, reimbursement yes, uh, directly on your health insurance payments, uh, uh, payments uh, so that you have a net social insurance contribution transfer scheme. So these two are nets schemes and this is a cross scheme and I try to convince you that the cross scheme is important to have the relevant information to see what your climate scheme, what your climate budget at least in financial terms really is. In the net system you do not see that because it reduces your income tax or it reduces your insurance pay payments but you do not really recognize this and take care about the difference between the carbon tax yeah, which is, uh, 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 um, which is not uh, inside that system. Yeah, it's only the income tax, and here also the insurance payments, the carbon tax, is not what is related to it. Yeah, so it means more information um, engagement for the citizen. So, my argument here is now that with the cross scheme you have more visibility and incent incentivization of the ecological behavior. Only with the cross scheme 
take care about net contribution, net extraction of the ecological system, yeah, <laughs> by paying a net carbon tax. And over the year, if your personal one is higher than the reimbursement by the climate basic income, yeah. Or if the climate basic income is higher, then you have on the net terms, uh, on the average, contributed to climate protection. Yeah? Because you extract financially less than you receive out of the system. So the citizens can then calculate their payments due to their individual contribution to environmental damage. That's the carbon tax payment against their environmental premium, against their bonus. That's the climate basic income. So, will you be at the end a net payer or a net recipient? That might be um, very important for your calculation to see if you are an ecological nice person or <laughs> an ecological malevolent person, yes? Because the net cost contributor or the net beneficiary of the ecological system is then identified by you personally. If the government wants to get the information, it could also receive the information. Yeah? If this is worth, is another question, yeah? <laughs> um, which has to do with liberty and so on. I will not discuss liberty too much today, but uh, one could control the net contribution, ju just like in the European transfer system where one can control if a country is a net payer like Germany or net receiver like Greece, yes. Um, and you see here it's a version that's very important and there then we are in the principle of climate justice of the benefit principle as a balanced justice, yes. So just like uh, Lemerzahl applied it as a tax principle, the private climate budget, the private household's climate budget may be net positive or net negative. So, uh, for example, higher tax inducing expenditures are over or non compensated by the CBI, yes, by the climate income. This means if you increase your pollution with carbon, yes, <laughs> and the climate basic income increases on the net, you might be a receiver. The society uh, might pollute then so much more, yeah, then you are in relative terms a nice person and not <laughs> a, 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 a climate um, disaster organizer, yes. I know on, on the abs in absolute terms it's not quite right. For that we need the incentives, the incentivization that you reduce your carbon tax. So by that way you should also reduce the climate basic income. I will also show these effects then, yeah? But you see, as a benefit principle, uh, one could argue it's an automatic one, yeah? The government could calculate it, that it is in accordance to what you pull, uh, push out of the system and what you receive from the system back, yes? That's a benefit system, quid pro quo, and then you pay in net or you receive net, yeah? Uh, so therefore, that's very, that's very interesting if the government applies then the benef this benefit principle as a taxation rule for um, environmental damage, environmental climate uh, protection and security is another question, but he could with that principle. And concerning incentives, yeah, you have information about your uh, financial um, um, about your financial indication of the net damage or the net uh, uh, um, um, climate uh, um, protection. It gives you an incentive for climate protection and it gives also a climate protection advantage whenever it is a cross carbon tax climate basic income scheme, not one of these net Schemes. That's very important because many say for um, administrative purposes a net scheme would be easier, yes, and very nice, but no one will then get the information he needs to be incentivized uh, to, to uh, protect 
climate individually and also socially. That's very important. Um, I will also give additional hints on that um, concerning revenue neutral application of the carbon tax. It is also very interesting that um, we can argue that we don't have strategic manipulation by specific interest groups, yes? This argument will harm some of the we should employ the carbon tax revenues for um, specific climate protection programs, yes? In, in engaging in the double division, for example, in, um, in subsidizing um, solar um, energy or solar module prices and so forth. Why? Because if, for example, wind energy against solar energy, and now you know the newest uh, uh, um, idea from the European Union that also nuclear power energy <laughs> might be um, protecting the climate, yes? Then you have all these specific interest groups interested in receiving yes, a rent, the highest rent which is possible for their purposes out of the tax revenue of the carbon tax. Yeah? Then the carbon tax revenue is something like a common pool and the different interest groups try to fish out of that pool as much money as they If it's really good for climate or not, doesn't matter. They try to convince others that their idea is the best and that their idea is system relevant yeah, for climate protection. Yeah? And this gives a rent seeking movement towards the state the money for uh, solar or for wind energy yeah, or for bio or um, um, uh, um, developments in uh, technologies yeah, or give it to households buying, yes, subsidizing them, buying uh, the solar panels and so on and so forth. Um, this uh, uh, me clearly means a lot of uh, non product interest group activities, yes, to receive of the carbon tax revenue. With the um, 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 climate basic income scheme, yes, uh, you have a tax transfer scheme which is because everyone who can calculate then if he is a net a contributor, yes, in the scheme or net beneficiary, yeah, um, which has its own purpose, engage specific interest group activities because it does not pay. Everyone receives the same. Yeah? You cannot uh, organize some strategies in developing strategies, strategic behavior, or in developing technologies only to receive the money out of the carbon tax. This game is over. And it's, I would say, a very good game to start the argument uh, towards a carbon tax um, transfer system that it is not too much manipulable from a strategic political point of view. That's a big advantage of the carbon tax climate basic income scheme because it's completely strategy proof. Yeah? Uh, that's very important. Uh, other things I can show in a graph one moment is that we don't have by this reimbursement by uh, a climate basic income um, we have no socially re uh, regressive impact on of the carbon pricing. See the blue line here in that graph. It's, it's a German graph but you see here in, uh, it's also useful for English conversation. Here euros in absolute terms here, relative terms, if you are uh, uh, um, um, over the average or low or lower than zero, and then you see if there is no reimbursement, ohne Rückverteilung, no reimbursement, then the, um, um, then the percentage of the percentage of the um, burden yeah, decreases. Therefore, this system is impressive. In the end, the rich ones, yes, 
in relative terms, uh, gain a little bit from the system compared to the poor ones. If you reimburse it, you will see it later on, then you are on this dotted uh, blue line here, then you see the low income deceals here um, are net receiver, net beneficiaries, and these are here net payers. So the rich ones, yes, in that system are burdened in terms of payments and the poor ones are receivers. Why? Because they do not consume so many goods which produce climate damage. Very simple, because they don't have so much money. Yeah? So that's an interesting, a very important effect that you move from a regressive structure to a progressive one, giving more a uh, fair redistribution from the rich to the poor ones. On, uh, it is not too, too much shifting on the average from the uh, distribution neutral zero line. Yeah, and on the other, you have in assistance the benefit principle there yeah, that uh, you can calculate does this system pay for you, yeah, or are you a net contributor and you have to pay in the system more than you receive? For you, two things benefit principle and then redistribution towards the poor one, which are usually the increase by a carbon tax. That's the big problem. Yeah. So, as I said, um, one moment, here, yeah. no socially regressive impact of the carbon prices uh, anymore. Uh, net savings, as I mentioned it, for the low income households, and this overall increases, that's my, um, my proposition, the social acceptance the transition and the reform towards climate protection. Yes, it's a mild redistribution from the top to the bottom. Yes, everyone can calculate. Yeah, also some poor ones or some rich ones might be beneficiaries or might be contributors. Yeah, then everyone can calculate. Everyone is informed, maybe incentivized to, to do a little bit more for the climate uh, uh, protection system. And uh, due to the redistribution effects and the, the two fairness arguments of um, redi like mild redistribution from the top to the bottom and the benefit principle, uh, it increases the social acceptance and the political acceptance to enact a reform, which is also very important. Yeah? That uh, the politicians as well as the society accept the carbon tax system. Here the carbon tax, uh, the integrated carbon tax transfer system. So what is different to a classical basic income is that the, clearly the climate basic income is a residual. Yes, because it, it, it is not uh, based as a usual basic income by arguing or announcing yeah, to participate in our society, you all receive 1,500 euro as a basic income, independent of your labor income. Yes, This is a given amount. And then the question is all over the citizenry, yeah, how expensive is that budget and how to finance it? that climate basic income yeah, is the outcome of the carbon tax. Yes, the, it, it is inverted. The carbon tax revenue defines uh, the climate basic income as a residual by averaging the carbon tax revenue over the citizens. Clear? And if um, the carbon tax uh, climate basic income transfers system to a reduction, what we hope, in the long run at least, in a reduction of climate damage towards more climate security, then it has to be that the tax revenue will decrease and therefore also the climate basic income will decrease. But here the main argument is that you receive a basic income. It's only a partial contribution to your household uh, consumption, yes because it finances a little bit the households, especially the poor ones, 
that's a good thing in terms of basic income, but in terms of climate protection, the information and the transparency of the system towards the incentivization, yeah, to calculate your costs, yeah, which you have to pay yeah, into the tax system, carbon tax system, and what you receive as a beneficiary out of the system, yes, is the climate effect. Yeah? And this is for the climate basic income more important than the basic income effect, uh, which is only a partial uh, unconditional basic income that your household expenditures are financed. Clear? If you are a net beneficiary, then you have to pay for the carbon tax, say 1,000 euro per year, yeah? and if you receive out of that carbon tax Yeah, 2,000 extra euros, yes? This is therefore also an unconditional basic income transfer for your other consumption, yes? Not for the carbon tax payment. So we can expect that climate damage will resist on a high and therefore tax revenue generating level for a long time, namely as long as climate damage is solved. Yeah, we, we all hope that the carbon tax reduces climate damage and increases climate protection, yes. But you know um, that the damage, uh, uh, they speed up and they are so large, especially at the poles, we know that, yeah, that uh, to solve climate damage completely, it will be a long, long way. It will be a long way, yeah. You know, the, the two degree yeah, uh, 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 target is only one argument to stabilize our situation whenever the target is still quite right. But you do not contribute by that uh, uh, target to, um, 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 to protect uh, the climate and therefore the earth and the citizens and all these animals even more that we move back to a situation which is even better. Yeah? So uh, if climate uh, protection is solved by the two degrees um, 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 target is for me a very he heroic and optimistic assumption. So I'm sure that the carbon tax will stay a long time yeah, and will have a relatively high tax revenue, especially when we tax carbon to such a degree that the taxation in itself gives incentives to protect the environment, then the 35 euro will not be enough, also 50 euro will not be enough, then we need 100 euro or whatever, yes? If we are willing to pay that, maybe a different question, but if you pay carbon tax, yes, uh, then you may be more willing to pay it, you see, there's the option to be re by the climate basic income. Yeah? <laughs> uh, this is a very good incentive for that. So the net savings for the low household, income households, as, as I have shown in the graph, the dotted blue line may be essential. And the increases of the social acceptance uh, and political legitimization towards climate pr protection will be there. So therefore, you see, the, this idea with the climate basic income is also a reform, yeah, introducing transition and enforcement system. Not only uh, helping protecting the climate, but also convincing the society to do the reform because they can receive if they take care about the environment and if they take care about reducing uh, carbon and carbon tax, by the way, that they will receive something for that. So the ecological steering, you see, role clearly remains or even increases. Household reducing carbon emissions receive a relative benefit and emissions adjustment therefore pay. So concerning the redistribution, there are, as I mentioned it, some arguments for the re fair redistribution and the inequality mitigation by the equal climate basic income uh, payments, the reimbursement for everyone. 
richer persons produce on the average more climate damage, as I mentioned it, this means a higher carbon emission in absolute uh, terms. These then these yellow um, um, points here, and you see this is the deviation uh, concerning the average in absolute terms in every income decile. This means in every income class, yes, because you may have fluctuations with the effects on the climate. Um, tax reimbursement system on everyone which might be different yeah so okay that the um, the re the net effect might be positive or negative and uh, this um, differences shows here the differences concerning the average in every um, in every class which is possible for the different individuals yeah, so uh, uh, um, climate basic income induces, therefore, from top to the bottom redistribution. And really, this means for tax plus transfer sum. I mentioned it, yes, the net payment you receive, or you have to pay of especially the lowest income groups here. Um, yeah, show uh, that there is the theory distribution from the bottom to the top, yeah, because they are not the producers, so therefore they be net beneficiaries, yeah. So in 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 uh, that's the story builds out of that system to be poor in climate terms pays, yeah, <laughs> because we receive our system money yeah because they don't pollute the air by uh, uh, carbon emissions um, by inducing carbon emissions as much as the rich ones uh, what one can also show is that on the average families realize a relief a net payment yeah because clear it's indicated by the way that the um, climate basic income is also for children yeah that's very important yeah when you invest that only in solar panels or so, the, um, the tax uh, revenue, then this effect doesn't happen in yeah, uh, because it's not a payment per person, per head. It's a payment on doing something on the roof of a house, yes, on an investment which is more or less independent of the number of children or so. Um, Surprisingly, what can be also shown uh, by Bach and others, they have shown it, there is a higher target efficiency. The usual argument would be, I guess you would also uh, like to argue in that way, target efficiency would be if you invest the tax amount directly in solar panels or in technological development, which is good for more climate protection. Yeah? More modern climate security technologies. In our social system, we can show it is not. Why? Because in our social system, if we take this into cooperation, in, 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 into uh, account, then we have many non take ups in the established graduate transfer system. A child benefit. Uh, there you don't have too much non-take-ups, but with student support, the Germans know the BAföG, for example, or social basic income provision and services. This is the Grundsicherheit. Many uh, uh, do not care. It is allowed for them. So they have, we have a lot of stigmatization and non-take-up in these systems, yes, which we don't have uh, in uh, the reimbursement system because you simply receive money. Yeah? <laughs> there is no take up problem. So therefore, concerning the social support element of the basic income, yes, it's more target efficient for social support than the traditional um, social insurance system. This seems to be uh, uh, um, a It is not when you take account all the effects, not only the climate effect, 
with the target efficiency, but also the social protection effect when you, at least when you are a net beneficiary. That's very important. So, but all this has to assume that this uh, really take place, that the CPI will not be offset with other social transfers. You see here the same argument. It has to be a cross system. Yeah, if you have an offset that you say, okay, I all I, I take all these things into account, then you still have the non-take up system because if you do not have to, if you do not take up your um, basic uh, provision and service, yes, then offset is of no usage for you. Yeah, the net offset you do not see that. Yeah, or if the take up uh, is only very mild. So therefore, it's very important, again, that we have a cross system also inside the social insurance system, inside the carbon tax um, climate basic income system. So you see, no overall net social transfer principle. Only the cross transfer principle generates environmental, ecological visibility, transparency, and rightful individual calculation, and it generates reform interests and acceptance of the tax transfer scheme, of the CO2 CPI cross scheme. Yeah? So it seems surprising because very often you said a net payment is enough, but you see you get more information, you calculate for uh, concerning your environmental responsibility more clearly, uh, more demanding cross system for the um, payment of the um, 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 carbon, uh, oh, sorry, of the climate basic income directly to you so that you recognize it is important only the average or my net payments yeah, out of the taxes for the whole system to the government minus uh, the benefit I receive is positive or negative then you will not calculate or you will not take care about the climate of your individual climate damage effect. So is the climate basic income scheme then normatively sustainable? Yeah? This proof has to be still provided and I will give you a short introduction to um, this normative so far we have discussed only positive effects and some reasons for it. Now to base it, that's the idea of new order liberalism. To, to, uh, you have learned one argument, one argument is payments and the second argument was strategy proofness. Yeah? That is also a normative argument yeah? and information and incentivization and so on and so forth. But here I would like to show first how the um, how the new order liberal principle, the, the approach works. I will not apply it because I have not done it so far to the um, um, climate basic income scheme. Yes, this is still future research, but I have applied it to the Paris Accord, to the climate contract, to show that the climate contract is not a good contract from the new order liberalism, from this Freiburg tradition, no, point of view. And the argument here is, under this new liberalism in English language, I usually call it progressive or liberalism, different from the traditional approach, which is usually taught in Freiburg, yes, all the liberal times of Oye, um, of Hayek and all his followers. This here is uh, more or less uh, my approach by condensing arguments of others is in modern co social contract research, the individuals will find ex ante fair rules. So up to now we have discussed the, uh, uh, the, the carbon tax climate basic in might be ex ante fair because it holds the benefit principle and it uh, is um, 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 it shows redistribution from the top to the bottom, yeah and because it gives you incentives to calculate uh, your environmental or your environmental savings. Yeah? But is that enough? 
Yeah, <laughs> if you would like to say, um, in the long term, I do not like that system because I'm a net payer, yes, and this gives me a burden, and I want to, um, I want to evade any burden. What the reason for this payment? Yes, I want to evade it. Therefore, stop the system. Then, if a mature or an intellectual part of the society argues in that way, the system, even when it is good for climate protection, will stop because it's not socially sustainable. Then it's ecological, it would be ecologically sustainable, but not socially. And my argument is social sustainability is sometimes at least the same important, but very often even more important to stabilize our life and our social system in which we live. And here the arguments are usually to the traditional social contracting ex post checks. Ex post means that it is stable, that it is sustainable, that it is durable, and that uh, this state has ability. State means the citizen right, not only uh, the decision in the state, the politicians, the citizen right, yes, that uh, to, um, uh, to enforce them and to uh, stabilize the um, carbon tax climate income system. And there we have three arguments, or I have three arguments. The first is justice. Do you believe be different from your ex ante arguments, yes? When you started the reform, you in the system, but some years later you will say, it's good for climate, but bad, bad for myself. I would like to organize a revolution or a reversion of the reform, yeah? Therefore, you see, it's uh, related to conflict proofness and reform and renegotiation proofness. Re means that you might argue, let us renege on the system, let us find another system, it's good for climate protection, therefore good for my children, but bad for me, I would like to renege the system so that I don't have to pay too much. Yeah? And if that does not work, renegotiation, I organize conflict. Yeah? Um, just in the Ukraine for uh, um, um, conflict, the Russians could argue, over a long time with that neoliberal, yes, um, 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 with that neoliberal trade system, we were the relative losers yeah, for a long time now since the bro breakdown of the Iron Curtain. We do not accept to be the relative losers compared to the Europeans and the, to the Chinese yeah, uh, for the next century. So therefore we organize crime, conflict, yeah, <laughs> a war to receive something. And therefore, we receive some benefit for us because otherwise, in the in the globalized neoliberal trading system, is the relative economic argument for Russia to engage in a conflict. Yes, I do not say that it is a good one, but you see here one has to take care about conflicts, also climate conflicts, and so on and so forth, yes? The reimbursement, I argue, inside the society or between different nations, yes? You will also mitigate climate conflicts, first uh, due to climate um, damage when you do nothing, or due to climate protection when climate protection hurts or burdens some of the individuals too much. Yeah? So that you uh, have to compensate them by the climate basic income so that they say, okay, something is what I have also out of the system. Okay. Strategy proofness. Yes, I gave you an argument that the no reimbursement system manipulable was not strategy where the cli uh, with climate income is strategy proof and on the other hand the question is which I cannot solve here do we need uh, governance yeah? 
either government, that the government has to introduce the climate tax, or could we find a enforcing mechanism that, that the individuals are confronted with climate damage. They agree under all circumstances, yes, if they are net payers or net receivers, on that system because they say it's so important for us to survive. Yes, this, this would work perhaps if my generation would not have the illusion to be damaged by the climate system. Yeah? At the moment we say, okay, you are the younger ones, it's your problem. Solve it, it's not our problem. <laughs> so therefore I will not pay for your future. Do you know what I mean? So therefore I do not have a payment incentive for you. Perhaps if you are my children, I would have a payment incentive. But if I do not take care about intergenerational altruism, my generation will say, oh, okay, we can survive with a quite nice life now, yes, with, with accepting the climate damage. I will die in a few years. For me, it will not be the problem <laughs> that uh, uh, the climate damage will arise. So therefore, the future generation of it, not me. So the self-enforcing would not take place. But if would net recipient, yeah, I could have interests to save with you together also some carbon emissions by my own consumption because I say, okay, I receive some money from that system. This helps me also in consuming things, in, in saving money for some. Then I see the purpose for my generation also. And then this system might become self-enforcing because everyone believes that it is even the net argue I pay for my climate damage <laughs> and I know others are net receivers, yes. They have more incentives to save and climate than I have, yeah, but we compensate each other in a system which is called FAIR. So therefore, uh, uh, you decide on this individually. Yeah? So, and these three things uh, define then durability, stability, and state capacity. What I will do as my last step is to show such, such a system, a climate protection argument, uh, another climate protection movement does work and did not work, you know it. We, we, we have the social, we have a climate protection goals, yes, um, of the UN and so on. And we have also the Paris Accord of the UN, uh, the contract. We all agreed, at least implicitly, in 2016. And I know now shortly that this contract is not, is not socially sustainable. It would be, if we would act in accordance to it, it would be ecologically sustainable. But because it's not socially or politically sustainable, sustainable, in the end it fails. And my hope is that the carbon tax climate basic income scheme is socially sustainable so that it is ecological sustainable and social sustainable that it will not fail just like the Paris Accord. Um, for, because we have the agreement which was based on robust data on the climate change, yes, uh, the Paris Accord was arranged and we could argue there were an ex ante fair as in terms of the a traditional contract, social contract we might be the fact that we could argue, okay, we had the agreement on it, we did not know too much about the future, we ha had different scenarios, yeah, but we think the accord can capture all these scenarios and we vote for it, yes. We had an agreement, a contract is an agreement, everyone has to sign, so therefore we could say in principle it's ex ante fair. Yeah, but the contract was not really implemented, and it was uh, not possible, and in many countries difficult to enforce. Why? And this is because my social sustainability arguments um, uh, do not hold for the Paris Accord. First, 
uh, does the Paris Accord survive the ex post justice check? No, or perhaps this means is it a consequence proof? This means when you have consequences under the contract, do you all still vote for the contract? Do you like to enforce the contract which is now given? Yeah? Or do you vote against the contract so that when a, a critical mass is against the contract, the contract cannot be effectively implemented? It does not serve climate protection if only some kind yeah, act in accordance to the Paris Accord with the two degree um, a target, for example. Um, the problem is, will the contract be attacked to do ex post identified and perceived unfair conditions for some countries. And we had an attack, if this attack is justified or not, on reasons of justice is another question, yes? But some try to manipulate it specifically by arguing the contract is unjust. Donald Trump said Paris is unjust for us. Therefore, we leave it. Yeah? He tried to organize a renegotiation threat. If um, burden the contract for the Americans, yes, on which the Americans signed the contract yeah, uh, in the beginning, if that is not renegotiated, I will leave the contract. USA is not more a um, member of the Paris Accord. This is clearly a renegotiation threat. He tries to renege the responsibility and cost conditions or the agreed time schedule. Yes, not, not so many costs for the Americans, for the US, I would say, and uh, not so much responsibility for climate damage. Yeah? You know, responsibility can be expressed in average terms or in absolute terms. And in average terms, it's always better for because they have so many <laughs> people. Yeah? And in absolute terms, it's better for US because Chinese, China is in absolute terms the highest polluter and not US. No? So therefore, China tries to ha to manipulate and to renege the system towards per head. Yeah? Um, um, climate um, damage and US is more interested in absolute terms, yeah, absolute climate da damage terms per country. Yeah? And therefore you see it seems, to be, it seems not to be conflict proof and they always try to renegotiate. The contract is not stable. Yeah? And you see some of these arguments are at least from my um, system, for my system of the new or progressive order liberalism really new. I try to schedule it in a new way. So, second, um, are the uh, uh, is the contract uh, individually or politically strategically non-manipulable? Is, is he strategy proof? And here I would say clearly no. No. Yeah. Therefore, no surprise because and many countries misrepresented, that's the difference to renegotiation, yes, misrepresented their climate change and air pollution, so-called under-revelation, yes, the US arrives, no, yeah, we are not the biggest polluter, yes, and you said we are not responsible for climate change, and others arrive, we are not so much responsible for climate change. Everyone tries to misrepresent and to underrepresent at least his responsibility. Also the poor countries, they said our political development is, uh, level is not so high, so therefore we have to have the right during the next 50 years to pollute yeah, with carbon. Yeah? In of distribution between rich countries and poor countries of the southern hemisphere, this might but in terms of protecting the climate, this doesn't pay at all. Yeah? <laughs> they also have to stop climate pollution. Yes? It's not a good argument to say the technologies are here, therefore we cannot stop pollution. be a big damage to the absolute pollution problem is the climate um, problem, not if you have certain reasons for still keeping your 
ocean level. Yeah? So therefore also the poor countries had bad arguments of uh, uh, misrepresenting them, not under, uh, under uh, evaluation of their pollution contributions, but misrepresenting and strategic manipulation of justifying their specific kind of pollution. So everyone tried to manipulate the goals and the results of the contract. Yeah? So therefore, no surprise that the contract is heavily strategic behavior. No real strategy proof, yeah? rightful representation of the pollutions to have a, um, 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 a clear, transparent um, design of the contract, which is very important to solve climate uh, damage for climate protection in the future that no one mis misrepresents his responsibilities and his capabilities for financing climate protection. Yeah? For example, US uh, and others said, oh, our tax revenues for uh, supporting climate protection are not so high as you might imagine. Yeah? And I cannot introduce a, a large um, tax amount for climate protection because in US we have to solve other economic problems first with our tax revenues. Yeah? And you see it at the moment, many argue, at the, many argue at the moment we need the money for uh, financing the problems of the COVID crisis and of the Ukraine um, conflict crisis and not for the climate crisis. And you will see they have after these crises that they can, with such crisis prevention, yes, <laughs> uh, keep their money for investing it in climate protection. Yeah? That's a new, I, I'm very sure that this will be a new strategy to prevent a lot of investment in um, climate protection. So therefore, I argue we need that system, once again, with climate basic income, that everyone has the feeling that he receives personally something out of the climate protection system. And the Paris Accord, I can be short on it, is neither self-enforcing, um, you see the exit of US, so if someone exits a contract, it's not self <laughs> because for him, he would not like to enforce the contract, he would like to vanish from the contract, and on the other hand, we don't have a governance constraint because we don't have a potential hegemon, hegemon to enforce the contract like US or China yeah they tried to exit yeah um, we don't have a secondary hegemon who would like to overtake uh, that position so that uh, the self-enforcement between the remaining countries also seems not to be possible. we will do it with US yeah you know it there's a, there's potential hegemons uh, system, they exit, and the other who still want to have to stay in the system can organize a self-enforcement of the system. So the system will not work at all. Yeah? And here my last work, word on it is we have to find now um, a social sustainable solution for the carbon tax climate basic income scheme that it is self-enforcing or that at least some leader yeah, of the hegemon to enforce the system worldwide. Yeah? Uh, at the moment we discuss it in Europe and in Germany with carbon taxation. That's a good starting point. It may be that we will as the ethical hegemon. We tried it several times, yes, uh, but we have to convince US and China at least to be quiet on that point and not in the opposite. To argue, okay, that the Europeans may start and when they are successful, we will follow them. Yeah? Uh, a principle which uh, Ms. Merkel tried to organize uh, for the leave of the nuclear power. Um, um, production in Germany, all arguing if it works in Germany, 
the others will be convinced that it works, and then they will join the exit of production, which is now diverted by the Ukraine. Did calculate here the effect on the energy crisis to make carbon tax climate basic income reliable and more enforceable in terms of the new order liberalism. I'd work to speed it up. Yeah? There's a hope, and this hope is fatal because it's on a crime based on a war. Yeah? You know, sometimes it's important to have an, an enemy or to solve a problem. And a change problem and the climate security on abstract enemy, so to speak, yeah? in conflict terms. We could call him nature. Yes? <laughs> the nature um, acts more or less against humankind when we still damage the nature even more. Yeah? Nature is neutral. It is not an ethical uh, person also, but clearly concerning climate damage, yeah? We have to make the nature more mild, yeah? But it's an abstract enemy against humankind, whereas, say, Russia at the moment is a human yeah, enemy, which shows more forcefully our limits, yeah? So we hope that we have learned also from the COVID crisis, which is in the end also a nature crisis, because, um, 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 because health is also abstract, yes, wherever. The, 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 wherever the, the, um, the, the pandemic uh, came from, yes. Uh, but we can hope now that with all these crises, this will induce a climate tax. Fast, because we know now 